Hey guys, so back for another cardio AMA and I'm going to crack straight on with it. So the first question is from Greg Cooper and he asks, what is your take on meal timings? Uh, obviously quite a loaded question, quite an open question, so I'll just give you what I personally think and I recommend to people. So the first thing is to not worry too much. Um, so one thing that we know is that ultimately the total daily so your total daily intake is what's going to make the biggest impact and then you can make the minor adjustments to meal timings from there so first of all get your total intake right and then you can kind of start thinking about meal timings and the first thing i would say is make it sustainable and fit fit into your lifestyle so if you're uh, say you've got an office job or, or some sort of job where you cannot eat regularly like all the time, so like six times a day, eight, eight times a day, four times a day even um, don't force yourself to do it if you're not going to be able to stick to it, it's become, going to become a chore or a burden um, just do what you can not that I recommend eating eight times a day anyway but just make sure it's sustainable first thing um, but to go into the more kind of sciencey bit of it there is uh, research or recent research, it's not conclusive because total protein wasn't taken into account or it wasn't high enough, but that regular protein doses or protein feedings uh, could increase the rate of muscle protein synthesis. So basically having protein more often, as in, so rather than just one or two, two meals a day, it's better to have it over six meals a day or four meals a day that could increase the rate of protein synthesis but as I think the study in question like the, the protein intake was like 80 grams or something it wasn't conclusive so what I'd recommend to get into the crux of it is four to five meals a day of and getting a good dose of 30 grams of protein at each meal pretty standard and other than that just eat around the workouts that is so it's going to give you enough energy. Um, so some people they find they like carbs before a workout, like me, I prefer my carbs kind of pre-workout. Whereas some people feel better post-workout. So completely individual. But um, meal timers, I wouldn't stress it too much. I don't personally. I just try and get a good dose of protein uh, about three or four times a day. That's it. So next question comes from Danny. Could you do a video on how you like to calculate clients' fibre intake? I know a general guideline is 20 to 60 grams because it depends on calorie intake. Also, how do you do? How do you like to do your peak week? So I'll start off with the fiber. So you kind of answered your own question. So the general guideline is 20 to 60. I'd say more like 25 to 60, and it does depend on calorie intake. So always have a minimum of 25. And not only does it depend on calorie intake, but I think it depends on personal preference as well. Um, so some people like they can deal with a higher amount where some people feel quite uncomfortable on a higher amount but I'd say a minimum of 25 not to go above sort of 70 maybe even 80 depending on how many calories you're on but it comes, again it comes down to personal preference you know if you can if you can have 45, 50, 60 grams then yeah by all means obviously the higher your carbs are the higher your fibre is probably going to go but what I would say is just try and keep it relatively consistent. So within sort of 15, maybe 20 grams. Because if you do what I did and like jump straight up by like 30 grams, then yes, yeah, it's not going to be fun. Uh, so second question, how do you like to do your peak week? Um, well, I kind of mentioned this a little bit in my last one about the shoot prep. And what I say about peak week is that you might make it, if you, even if you get it 100% right, you might make yourself 5% better. So the best thing to do is to not do anything over the top. So you're probably looking at just slowly increasing carbs at the start of the week, see how your body reacts, and just go from there. Um, obviously if you spill over, then you can reduce them. If you're still feeling flat, then you can have some more, make yourself feel a little bit more full. Don't do anything drastic, don't cut water, don't cut sodium, just, Get, get lean, you know. You remember that kid at school that just was always shredded, always ripped? Do you think he was playing around with his sodium intake and his water intake on a daily basis? No, he was just shredded to the bone. So just remember that, Keep bear that in mind. Okay, this uh, last one is from Dan. 
What does your family think of your bodybuilding lifestyle? My family are generally pretty negative about the obsessive diet and vain posing that is part of our way of life. Did you manage to win over your family when they saw you were profiting both physically and mentally or did they ever, or did they never need convincing? Um, I think definitely at the start, I remember when I was like 16, 17, and my mum thought I was a bit going a bit over the top with it. But not necessarily the obsessive diets, just I was kind of getting big quite quickly compared to what I was. I didn't get that, I mean I didn't get that big, but she used to say, oh your arms are getting bigger than your head, which they weren't. I wish. Um, but no, I, I, I'd never, I think once they, they didn't really see it as a viable career option, and they were always trying to push me towards you know, doing a trade, it's quite an old school thing, like saying, oh yeah, be a chippy, be a sparky, be a plumber, or whatever. Um, just because my dad's been successful, you know, working for someone, and kind of following that path. So he didn't go to university, I didn't go to university. Following that path, and he's been relatively successful doing that. So they just kind of felt like that was the only way. And when I said I wanted to pursue the fitness thing, they didn't try and stop me, but they weren't necessarily convinced. And then obviously when I got that, um, my break to India, so I went to India to train Bollywood actor, they kind of realized it was then that they were like, oh, okay, <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe this is a viable career option for me. So I can see it now. So th there was definitely a little bit of convincing, but not, not too bad, not too bad. Hopefully that's answered your question, Dan. Okay, the last one comes from um, Jay. And he says, what are your views on insulin? Can of worms. Because my friend avoids sugar to avoid the, like an insulin spike or whatever. So before I, I'm gonna put this down. Throw that away there. Uh, before I answer this one, I'm gonna post a link in the description to an article called insulin dot 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 an undeserved reputation by James Krieger from weightology.com I think it's a six part series, five or six part series and it is, it's an amazing series to read and you'll know everything there needs to know about insulin so please kind of pause the video, whatever you do, stop, read it read it all the way through and you will know like that you don't need to be scared of insulin um, but in short, so to keep it like, to simplify it a little bit Let's imagine you've got a baseline, and when you eat, insulin obviously rises, spikes, goes up, and then your body releases glucagon as a response to that, and then it comes down below the baseline, so you're like this. There's actually a diagram on the article that kind of says the same thing. So, yeah, no matter what you do, like I'm in a deficit now, I'm losing body fat, there are gonna be times in the day when my insulin is gonna be spiked above baseline, and I'm gonna be storing body fat, even now. But the fact is my body's burning more, more often than it is storing. So let's say my insulin is spiked for 11 hours a day, but it's below baseline for 13 hours a day. I am burning more than I am storing, basically. So your body is constantly burning, storing, burning, storing, burning, storing. And ultimately when people eat too many calories, and their insulin goes too high and it's up high for too long, and they're spiking it too often for too long, then that's when you put on body fat. So these, these little spikes throughout the day, they're inevitable, they're gonna happen. But it's the, the bigger picture. So you gotta look at the bigger picture across the day, across the week. Um, so you, you don't need to worry about these little sugar spikes. And like water raises insulin, protein raises insulin, everything's gonna raise insulin. Every time you eat anything, even if it's just a protein and fat meal, you're gonna raise insulin. But it all depends on the, the whole day or the whole week and where on that baseline your body is throughout the whole week. So if you don't understand a word I just said, go read that article, read all six of them, and hopefully you'll get a little bit more of an understanding. So that's uh, my four questions for today. Make sure you keep asking them, uh, keep them up, and I'll try and keep answering them for you throughout these cardio sessions. Um, make sure you give us a thumbs up if you learned anything from this video, and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you very, very soon. Thank you for watching.